The 441st edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy has just added Pick'em Scorchers, where you can win 100 times your entry. That's right, turn $5 into $500 in just one game. Plus, every Sunday, they're giving away $100,000. Use promo code SGPN at Underdog Fantasy for a 100% deposit bonus of up to $500. And next, we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Plus, NBA is back and so is NBA Gambling Podcast. To celebrate, we're giving away an NBA Gambling Podcast hoodie. Head on over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash NBA dog for all the details. Heidi, Heidi Ho, DeGeneres. I'm, I'm adding extra Heidi in there for some reason. Heidi Ho, DeGeneres, and welcome to episode 441 of the MMA Gambling Podcast and the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Going out to my Phoenix Suns right there, who are already 1-0 on the season and already are sitting star players for games. So um, should be a fun year. Um, this isn't an NBA podcast. The last podcast was a little bit NBA, a little bit uh, MLB, a lot of MMA. This one is going to be mostly well who knows who knows what we'll get into uh my co-host has a hat on as well uh we already discussed what it means what it is last episode unless you've switched since i've nope it's the same hat nah, it's a churro. the churros <laughs> uh he would be daniel gumby Vreeland. that's his name right there on your screen right where it says gumby hello i feel like the fact that we uh we tape we tape two back to back is slowly coming to head here being that our yep. Our clothes don't change. My hat doesn't change. Right. The rough, uh, the rough setting doesn't change, except for every two. So I think that guys that we used to tape these on different days is finally gone. <laughs> it's it's fine. No one no one cares, right? People are gonna watch and listen regardless. We have real fans. Um, yeah, I don't change my clothes often anyway, Dan. So <laughs> that is not a way uh, to to decide whether we did it the same day or not. Um, is there any news we didn't discuss last episode that we should discuss before we jump into this one, Dan? We talked nah. about the heavyweight thing. Anything else interesting going on? Not really. We're in an off week. You know how it is. Yeah. And then we have what do we have next week? We have oh, Sao Paulo. We have our, our boy Jelton. Our boy Jelton versus Lewis. Poor Derek Lewis. <laughs> You're just gonna pause. Just Lewis. Yeah. Poor Lewis. Poor, poor, <laughs> I like I like Derek Lewis, but it's it's a shame that yeah. what what's gonna happen to him? I mean, he's like fighting for money though, right? Like, isn't that? Yeah, I mean, true. not that he probably doesn't want a title and all that the shine that comes along with that, but like he took a sh- short notice fight halfway across the world against a guy fighting in his backyard who's seen as this like monstrous killer. Like, yeah. I think he knows what he's signing up for, and I think they probably gave him a fat bag for it. Yep. Probably it is short notice as well. He he always could do the Curtis Blades on him, possibly right. He he could uh, fold him in half if uh, Jelton gets sloppy with his uh, with his takedown attempts. He he could, but D- Jelton's <laughs> got a little bit. I mean, Jelton's got some hands too. I I feel like that's something that yeah. uh, that that sets him apart from Kurt. Although Curtis knocked out Dawkins and made us all go yep. ooh. Ooh, it did. It did. Uh, other interesting things on the fu- uh, on the card: the Bond Finn brothers. Both of them are getting both of them. That'll be fun. We got some chunky heavyweights. That's always fun. Well, it's not fun, but we have fun with it. Uh, Kyle Bahio, we're fans of him. He he will be on the card. Um, He'll be on the Top Turtle else? MMA podcast next week, too. Ah, very good. Uh, Denise Gomes, we like her, right? Yeah, she's she a good bombs. Yeah. She throws bombs. Uh, oh, Montserrat Ruiz. The Montserrat that is uh, not the other Montserrat. This is the Montserrat that won you a, a big bet ages ago. And I keep like maybe betting her anyway. And like now I know it's yep. not a good idea. <laughs> lightning lightning struck once, yet you expect it to strike again. Um Modestus Bukoskis, he's not on your other show this week because I oh, love he is. his accent. Yeah, you yeah. Yeah, I, I've got I've got Cabo Ohio, Modestus Bukoskis, and Vince Pichel coming next week. So like a good time will be had. <laughs> a good time will be had. So anyhow, that is uh the Sal Powell. Apollo, excuse me, event November the fourth. But um, we got some cage warriors going down this weekend, and is not in 
the UK, as per usual, they are moving over to Rome, Italy. Perhaps you've heard of it. Um, in the Fier Roma. Have you ever been there, Dan? You have been to I, Europe, so this I, isn't a total crazy question. I've been to a couple of places in Europe. Not Rome, though. No. Okay. Uh, I've only been to places Rome. that have been built in a day. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, he's not Rome to Rome. This is a 14 fight card, so it's uh, we're not doing all 14 fights. We're going to do the top five. Thoughts on the fight card? No title on, on the line. No household names, quote unquote, like, like you like to use. The funny thing is, is that like, so I sent you, you asked me like, what five should we break down? There's five on the main card. So like, you're supposed yep. to do that. There's actually far better talent on the prelims. Uh, well, like, let's Sam, talk about it then. Like Sam, Sam Creasy is fighting on the prelims. Like right. Sam Creasy. I, I see that now. Yep. Yeah. And you, so like you, a guy who's not like, you know, a diehard constantly looking at the prelim cards of a cage warriors card is like, Oh, I know him. I, I know Sam Creasy. He's been in good fights before. And there was somebody else too. Hang on. Let me. Oh, Liana Liu. Was... Do you know Liana no. Liu? He fought in. Uh, uh, no. He was. Uh... I know Creasy because he used to... Creasy used to be the champ. Yes. Creasy did used to be the yeah. champ. Liana Liu yeah. fought on um, Contender Series one time. He got knocked okay. out in 52 okay. seconds or something like that. Um, but like was good enough to be on Contender Series. So we've got a Cage Warriors champ and a guy who fought on Contender Series on the prelims. And I'll be honest. Some of the names on here, you know, potentially interesting at some point in time, but like some of the ones on this main card are just like, I don't know how you put them ahead at Sam Creasy. I, I mean, like I'm not a big, yeah. you know, placement on the card person when it comes to, you know, regional shows and stuff like that. But like this one's kind of weird. I do remember Leon Aliu now that I see his name and his face. I do remember him. Um, yeah. So. Do you have any picks for the prelims or are these are the odds for, for these people you're mentioning too out of sight? Um, I'm imagining they're too out of sight. I'll be honest. I didn't okay. really look at them because I was uh, getting my work together for the five that we're about to talk about. All right. Well, I'm going to Google it quickly and we're going to find out what the odds are. Shall we? Do, do you have Just in front of you say. who Liana Liu got knocked out by? I remember uh, him yes. being viciously <sighs> knocked out. Bruno Frajera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Leo is minus 699. There's a fun yeah, line for there, you. There you go. So, yeah. Creasy like, minus 203. Is that a good line? Who's he fighting again? Uh, Tanya Pagliericio. I'm guessing the, uh, in Italian. Yeah, it sounds Italian. Um, there's some, there's I don't, some fantastic names. I don't know Pagliericio, so uh, mm-hmm. I'd probably have to do research because I, I mean, at first glance, just being skeptical of, you know, Creasy being only negative 200. Um, so yeah, I, I would say my instinct is good, but then I, I like panic that it sounds too good to be true. Giuseppe Mastro Giacomo. There's another good name. <laughs> there's, there's some fantastic Italian names. On we this got card. a Michelangelo coming up, which is pretty, we pretty do, dope. we yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're going to do the, oh yeah. The main card is only five fights and we're doing all five fights on the card. Um, cage warriors is, I'll tell you all the info before we break into it, how you can see it, when you can see it all. So this is a Saturday card, which is good because we don't have any UFC Saturday, 12.45 p.m. Eastern. So it'll be afternoon um, for those of us in the Eastern time zone. UFC pipe fight pass is where it's happening. And like I said, Fiera, Roma, Rome, Italy, in a cage, 14 fights. We're doing the top five after I tell you about some of our lovely sponsors that are keeping us in your ear holes. Because I, I guess we, we might, do the show for free, but probably not. I, 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 if we didn't have any sponsors, I probably wouldn't do it. I'm being honest here. All right, Underdog Fantasy. They're making sure we get paid and we stay in your ears. Underdog Fantasy has a way to play alongside your favorite football team all season long. Underdog has just introduced Scorchers. We've been telling about them the past few shows. They're still going on now. Scorcher is if you go five for five and pick them Scorchers, you enjoy a spicy hundred times payout. That is a massive payout. Very spicy. And for a limited time, Underdog is extending the first deposit bonus up to 500 bucks. And if that's not enough, you greedy. The Gens, they have $100,000 Sundays continuing on Underdog Fantasy. 10 lucky players will win $10,000 each week. 10 times 10K equals 100,000. That's my math there. Do you have a spicy play for these people? You gave yeah. a spicy one last episode. Yeah, if you get to this before the uh, the Thursday NBA games tip off, um, I saw that they got Joel Embiid higher than half a double double. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how we'll get more than one, but he should only be able to get one. Uh, but come on, he's going to get ten rebounds, ten points. Yeah, of course. In, in the yeah, that, that that just seems like they're they're trying to let you win it. 
They're so, uh, giving away money. Yeah, hi higher than half a double double. Yes, obviously. Maybe I'll include that. I do underdog. Oh, that reminds me. I got to do that tonight. <laughs> I forgot. Underdog NBA picks every night on the uh, sportsgamblingpodcast.com website. So uh, I, I have a suspicion do... that Joel Embiid higher than half a double double will make <laughs> yep. its way into that article. I have a feeling it will, unless he's not going to play tomorrow for some reason. Uh, that will make it in there. Plus, once World Series starts, Dan and I will continue our underdog MLB picks. So underdog's got every sport that you need. As you see on your screen, if you're watching on YouTube, they got MMA too. Look at that. Uh, that's from last event right there on your screen. Watch along, make your picks, and maybe even make a little cash over on Underdog's mobile app or website, underdogfantasy.com. And when you sign up with the promo code SGPN, Underdog will double your first deposit up to 500 bucks. There's Underdog Fantasy promo code SGPN. And in the Underdog, since we're in an Underdog groove here, we're giving away something. If you're on YouTube, you see it right there. You can win an NBA Gambling Podcast hoodie. It's a very nice hoodie. I don't even have one of those. Maybe I should enter the contest. NBA is back and to celebrate. We're giving away an NBA Gambling Podcast hoodie. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash N-B-A-D-O-G, NBA dog, to submit a screenshot of you playing NBA underdog using our promo code SGPN, and one random winner will get an NBA gambling podcast hoodie. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash N-B-A-D-O-G. We should do something like that, Gumby. We should give away hoodies. You're, you're hinting again that there <laughs> could be again. something in the works. Keep listening. What is definitely in the works is our Cage Wars breakdown we're going to start it now after we've killed enough time here not killed enough time we gave you valuable information we're going to start with bantam weights luca ivani ivine sorry like jimmy ivine uh versus andre tishenko uh so we have a italian versus ukrainian guess which one's which i, I bet you can't uh ivine nickname duke obviously what other nickname would you have he's 18 and 10 four knockouts 10 submissions He's been around a bit, this man. He's been knocked out once, submitted three times, 0-3 in Cage Warriors. He's lost two straight fights, and he's only won two of his last seven. Lost his last fight via submission. 0-1 in Bellator, plus 115. Tyshenko, 6-2, three knockouts, two submissions, never been finished in a fight. 1-0 in Cage Warriors, 4-1 over his last five. He's not lost since November 2021. Used fight up at featherweight, three inches taller than Ayavine, minus 150. If I was doing resume picks, I think Tyshenko looks like an obvious pick here and a very good number, but maybe I'm missing something. Here. No, no, you're a hundred percent right. This is All like right. one of the wildest regional. Cause uh, again, when, when I was, you know, lining these picks up for the show and stuff like that, the lines weren't out yet. And I was yeah. like, I, I mentally had Tashenko like up at like negative 600, negative 700, because you got a guy here in Iovine who likes jujitsu, likes to be grappling doesn't have good takedown defense and just gets comfortable on his back. Like he, he doesn't seem to have any idea how to get up. And you got Tasha Chayashenko who yes, his striking isn't great, but he does have good wrestling. He chains his wrestling together and he's like impossible to get him off of you. Once he's, he's gotten on top and is dropping bombs. So like, like he might just spend this whole fight in Iovine's guard but he's going to win from guard. So like ne negative 150 was like an absolute shock to the system. I can't believe it's not much higher than that, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Ty Shenko is, is the one here. All right. Get in on that number before uh turn up uh, messes it up on us. We haven't heard. Have we heard from turn up recently? Do we we're need gonna, to do a check on turn up? We're going to have to do a wellness check on turn up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what are we moving to now? Down to straw weight over to the women's side. Nicole Desegni, Desegni, Des, I should, I've said her name before because she's been, maybe not, she was on Contender Series many moons ago, before our show even. She's fighting Samantha Jean-Francois. So we've got Italian versus a French woman, um, Desegni, who is also an alternative model. When you when you Google her name, I'm like, do I remember her? Do I remember her from uh, Contender Series? I'm like, oh, okay, I do remember her. Yeah. Her, she first comes up as an alternative model. I think I'm if you have tattoos make, that I was going to make you explain make you that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm guessing uh, tattoos make you alternative, but isn't that that's not really alternative nowadays, is it? Really? It's I the don't way around. Should it not be? I don't want this show to turn into me finding <laughs> this out. Yes, yes. It's like alt rock when alt rock was on regular radio. It wasn't alt rock anymore. So it's all uh, anyhow. She's an alternative <laughs> model, whatever that is. She's ten and five. Four knockouts, two submissions. She's been knocked out once. Two and one in Cage Warriors. 
one and two over her last three, three and two over her last five, did lose her last fight. Oh, and one in contender series. Do you remember who she fought Dan many, many years ago? It- She's no longer in the, in the UFC. Oh, I was going to say Felice. Oh, was it Mallory Martin? Yes. Look at yeah, you. Yeah, look at Mallory that. Martin. She lost Mallory Martin. She, uh, Desegni is a regional champ. Used to fight up at Flyweight plus 100. Jean-Francois, Spicy is her nickname. She should be on Turner Model with a nickname like that. Spicy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's into Scorchers too, Dan. And there you go. Because you get she a spicy, spicy 100 times payout. The spicy underdog pick em scorchers. <laughs> exactly. She is eight and six, one knockout, seven submissions. So she's finished everyone mostly by submission. And she's gone to only gone to a decision once because she's been knocked out two times, submitted three times. This is her uh, no Cage Warriors debut. We're doing Cage Warriors. Uh, she's won four straight fights, all via re- rear naked choke. Pretty sure that's her go to move. Uh, has not lost since April of 2019. Is a regional champion or was? I'm sure it's on her mantle. I uh, used to fight down at Adam weight. So for the, uh, they used to fight 20 pounds different uh, weight classes. These two uh, inch taller than Desegni minus minus one thirty three. another close line for us. I'm actually going to go underdog here with Desegni. I I think, um, you know, originally I was like fader. Cause you know, I didn't think she looked that good in the Martin fight. And then uh, I want to say she lost to some other like wrestler types coming up. But the, the problem with Jean Francois is, is that like, she just, she she needs to do jujitsu in order to win, but she doesn't seem to have the wrestling to do it against somebody of Desegni's skill level. Um, Desegni like has lost to wrestlers, but like Jean Francois just seems like you know like most of her fights, including the last win of hers, she spent most of the fight on her back in the first two rounds until the other opponent got tired, and then she started to mount her own wrestling. I just don't see that happening with Desegni, and it's also worth noting. You know, you said all those wins for Jean Francois through rear naked choke or winning by submission Designy has never been subbed and you know like you said she's fought people like Mallory Martin in the past and she's fought other good opponents too and never had been subbed in all of that so I don't think she's gonna get subbed here I think her cardio is good enough I definitely think her work in the clinch is gonna be more punishing I think if she is on the ground she's gonna wind up being on top most of the time so uh I think she'll stay out of the submissions give me the dog money on Designy Let's do that. Let's give you the dog money on Disney. Excellent. Um, all right. We're going up a weight class. We're going over to the men's side again, flipping back and forth. This is flyweights. Michelangelo Lupoli versus Nicholas LeBlonde. Guess which one's Italian. Guess which one's French. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, French? French, I think. Uh, LeBlanc. French? Yeah. LeBlanc, yes. He is French, obviously. Um, all right. Who am I going to tell you about first? Usually the underdog. Who is the underdog here? Let's tell you about LeBlanc first. Eight and four, one knockout, five submissions. Another submission specialist. Never been finished any fight. Two and two in Cage Warriors. He's won two straight fights in three of four. So he's on a nice little run. Both uh, his last two wins have come via submission. Used to fight uh, down at, or up, excuse me, at Bantamweight. 2013 Pro MMA debut, plus 120. Dupoli, six and three with two knockouts. He's been submitted once. So anytime he's been stopped. One and one in Cage Warriors. Three and one over his last four. He did lose his last fight. Was a regional champion. Used to fight up at Bantamweight as well. Minus 160. So we got a lot of uh, nice lines here. Better than LFA. LFA had some uh, pretty wide lines. We got close ones. Yeah, I will also say, though, that the juice on some of these, right? Plus plus 120, negative 160. It's some, some pretty wideness on there. Um, I'm going to go dog again here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So with Lapoli is like a – he's like one of those Taekwondo guys who like with their hands way down all the time and is like – flashy and trying to get things done but uh, while he's kind of like a maniac like that like i don't really love his ground game um i i think uh, i think he shoots takedowns sometimes just to prove he can and then like tries to go back to his taekwondo stuff um but like leblond has fought you remember you know luke shanks right he fought luke shanks in a fight he dropped luke shanks early in that fight with like a hard counter when Shanks got a little bit too, you know, like too too floofy with his striking, much the way Lupoli does. Floofy, yeah. I'm gonna you can call that. How do you spell that? That's gonna be a title. How do you say that? It's How do you spell I, it? I think it's I think it's fluffy, but just with two U's. Um <laughs> Okay. Gotcha. I thought I thought um, there would be an O in there. It's not F O U F. It's the the F-Y? first the first U has an umla on it. So Okay. Uh, yeah, I yeah, so. can probably figure that out. Okay, too floofy. Gotcha. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh so in addition to being able to like crack Shanks, like he also took Shanks down, picked him up, slammed him on his head. 
Like he eventually did not win that fight because he tired out and Shanks, you know, Shanks is just like one of those relentless guys when it comes to, you know, people in the cage warriors flyweight division and eventually like got to him and won the decision. But like, you know, the fact that he can crack like that early, he's got the wrestling skills and he's going to be up against a guy who like wastes a lot of energy and, and Michelangelo Napoli. I, I think he's going to be the better. I think he's more likely to land the good strikes. I think that's the better way to put it. He might not be the better striker, but he's more likely to land the good strikes. So uh, give me the dog money on LeBron. All right. We're going back to back dogs. Not huge ones, but plus money is nice regardless. Um, all right. Where are we going to next? We are going to actually, I'm going to tell you about a sponsor and then we're going to finish off this. These here picks are going to tell you about Hall of Fame bets. We can't make them wait any longer. Win bigger by betting smarter this NFL season with Hall of Fame bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props and game lines. Research every NFL, NBA, MLB and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay idea into Hall of Fame bets, revolutionary parlay optimizer tool to get hit rates broken down by leg as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame bets. All right, co-main event time is where we're going to now. It is men's and it is featherweight, and it's Simone Dana from Italy versus Albert Diaz from Brazil. I would tell you about da- Diana first. The Tiger is the nickname. Nine and four, four knockouts, two submissions. He's been knocked out three times, submitted once, so he's been finishing all his losses. This is his Cage Warriors debut. He's won two straight fights. Before that, he lost two straight. Won his last fight via TKO. 0-2 in Bellator. Used fight down at Bantamweight, three years younger than Diaz, an inch of height on him, plus 175. Diaz is six and three, one knockout, one submission, so he doesn't really finish anyone, so he owes us a finish. He's been submitted himself twice, one no in Cage Warriors, two straight wins, and three of his last four have seen him have his hand raised. He's not lost since September of 2019. He was one known Bellator. He has missed weight. A couple fights ago, I believe, was when he missed weight. So keep an eye on that. 2012 Pro MMA debut. And he's at minus 235. He's the biggest favorite that we're going to cover today. So let's, I, uh, we got some close lines. I'm going to take dogs again. Um, you said one. W- w- A tiger what, dog? Yeah. What was the, the number on Deanna? 175. 175. So I, I like Deanna in this fight. Um, here's why. I, I think. Uh, I, I think. <laughs> Get this. Albert Diaz okay. is another guy who's a little floofy. Um, <laughs> oh, I was going to ask you about yeah, the floofiness. He, and he, here we he, go. He, he throws a lot of floof. Uh, there's, there's not a lot. Uh, there's not a lot of substance to the things he throws, right? Like he'll throw a spinning elbow when he's like six feet away from you. He'll spin it spinning back kick just for fun. And as you mentioned, he's a guy who's missed weight. So he's also had problems with his cardio. And when you look at Deanna, Again, his strikes sometimes are not super fundamental. They're like really long. They can be kind of loopy, but he does work really great to the body. Um, I really like, like sometimes he uses a long left hand that hits uh, on the ribs. I think that that could be really, really good against a guy who, first of all, spins a lot, right? Like he might wind up taking back or, or hitting him with shots to the body. Body moves less in some of those things. And in addition to that, it's also going to wear down Diaz too. So like, the, the weight miss with Diaz, the fact that he's dealing with, you know, like burning energy he doesn't need to. The fact that I think Deanna can just kind of crack with him kind of well. Um, and that I just don't think there's like a lot of substance to what Diaz is doing. I, I, I don't know that he'll land any of those big shots, despite the fact he's going to keep throwing them. Whereas Deanna is going to land to his body a bunch of times. So uh, give me Deanna here. Uh, that three dogs. That's three dogs in a row. Give me three dogs in a row. All right, we're fading the floofy once again. Fade uh, the floof. Floofiness. <laughs> Fade the floof. I know there go so many good titles, Dan. We should save some for other episodes. All right, main event. Lightweights. Simone Patrizzi from Italy versus Dimitri Gurlian from Italy. So Italy versus Italy battle here. And it is a rematch. I almost missed that the first time through, but researching. I realized it is a rematch. I'm going to tell you about Patrizzi first, the white shark. So we have a tiger uh, who Dan turned into a dog and then we, uh, or actually a live tiger dog. He always was a dog. Then we have a white, a white shark dog. He's six and one with three knockouts, one submission. He's been knocked out once one known cage where he's won three straight fights, 
he won his last one via TKO. He's not lost since February of 2021. Uh, that loss was to his opponent this week, Gurlian. Head kick knockout by uh, Gurlian. Uh, because of that, probably because of that, maybe there's more reasons. Uh, Patrizzi is a plus 150 dog here. Gurlian, six and two, four knockouts, two submissions. So he's finished everyone, and he's been finishing every one of his losses. He's been submitted in both those losses, so he's never gone the distance. This is only three five minute rounds, even though it is a main event, is not a title fight. Uh, one and one in cage wars for Gurleen, three and one over his last four, lost his last fight via submission, is a regional champion, or was price stars the belt, used to fight at welterweight minus 180. Did you watch the first fight? Uh, I, I went back and I watched some highlights of it. And the yeah. funny thing is, is that like, so I do like Gurleen in here, this fight. And I will just say this, it's not even the striking that I like him for. So the fact that he got a knockout in the first one is perhaps not even what I like about him. But like, when you go back and you watch some of the older fights from Patrizzi, he doesn't have good takedown defense. And then on top of not having t- good takedown defense, it takes him forever to find the right range. Uh, I watched one of his recent Cage Warriors fights, and I was, I was like infuriated with the amount of jabs he threw from like twelve feet away from his opponent. It like it gave me like weird Macy Barber flashbacks. Um, Ooh, yeah, you know, Macy, yeah, no. And I was like, just get closer to him and then throw it. You know, like yep. it was, it was yep. like one of those moments. And eventually, he does do that. But I think because it takes him so long to find range, that's why he gets hit with big shots sometimes is because then he eventually steps in and and the other person gets a good sense of it first. So like I, I think Gurleen has got the striking advantage because he finds range better, but also like he's got like a decent like trip and body lock takedown game. And like I said already, Patrizzi doesn't have a good takedown defense. So I, I think Gurleen's got like a bunch of advantages for me. Both him and Tushenko are like such good value plays, the numbers they're at. Um, and with both being just like ever so slight favorites, that might be that might be like the parlay of the day there. Okay. So once again, what is the parlay of the day? Gurleen and, and Tyshenko. Okay. Excellent. No, not um not too much floofiness with Gurleen. He's no floofy. I, I don't I don't think he's floof. Okay, good, good. good. We have to clarify that. All right, let's recap, and then we'll get out of your ears. All right, all right. Uh, Gerlin is a favorite, one of the rare favorites that Dan likes in this card. Diana, underdog. LeBlond, underdog. Desani, underdog. Plus, uh, even money, but underdog. And in the opener, Deshenko, slight favorite. Boom. Right. All right. <laughs> all right. We're gonna be back with Sunday. We're gonna count how much money Gumby won for us all. Right. What's your regional record? Do you have it in front of you? Or do you know uh, approximately what you're at? I think we're we're right around eight units on the year we're at. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Um, if, if you want more plays, I'm sure there'll be plenty more plays and props and fun stuff going on on our Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. We did our Invicta episode a couple episodes ago. Uh, that's a Friday event as well. So listen to that if you want more betting action this week and of course you do you wouldn't be listening to this if you weren't a true mma degen so uh or maybe uh, maybe our relatives listen do any of your relatives listen anymore uh, now they don't even no. know it's on youtube yet oh okay we scared, <laughs> we scared them off my brother might listen i think they may listen i'm not positive i i'm not i, I guess I'm, I'm gonna find out they're gonna they're gonna tell me now after hearing me call them out here um Discord. You'll find us in the Discord. Get in there. You'll find a lot of people in the Discord. A lot of friendly, friendly people. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. On Twitter, less friendly people on Twitter, but we're on there as well. <laughs> uh, SGPN MMA. I like Gumby Run that. Uh, I, I have enough on my plate. Come on. I let him run the YouTube channel too, but I'll help him whenever he needs help, okay? Uh, I'm putting that out in public. I will help you when you need help. That's that's nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you, you you can post the uh the podcast to the uh to the podcast server, and I'll do the YouTube instead. I'll give you ex- I'll give you more work, but I'll trade uh, you. I don't I don't think I like the trade. All right, I'll, I'll anyhow, Gumby the, runs. We do have YouTube. <laughs> uh, I I never say we do have YouTube. You you can watch MMAGamblingPodcast dot at the very least subscribe, and then watch us and download and listen to us as well. Um, I was in the middle of a Twitter th- rant there. Yes, SGP and MMA Gumby runs that. He's at Gumby Vreeland. I'm at Jeff Fox writer on that and on instagram gumby's top turtle podcast we talked about it every episode he's got three lfa fighters on it he's fading two of them tell us who's on your show 
Uh, Harris Talunzik, Naira Rep, and Shannon Clark all on the main go. card at LFA 170. No mention of Floofy on that episode, but it's still a good episode if you haven't listened yet. Um, I got a Substack. Someone just subscribed. Thank you very much for that person who just subscribed as I was recording this. Uh, money, mma.substack.com. Gumby did my logo for me way back in the day, way back a year or so ago. So at the very least, go on and check out Gumby's logo. Um, subscribe. You can subscribe for free or paid to unlock everything. And at the very least, you can enter my free pick em contest, even if you don't want to give me your hard earned money. That's moneymma.substack.com. Top Turtle MMA is Gumby's podcast. And the mothership is sportsgummypodcast.com. Go there for all good things in the world. Go there for all our articles. Gumby and I write a lot of them. Go there for all our podcasts. Go there for all our giveaways and our contests and our discounts and all those good things. Uh, and go to our Patreon. Help us crush corporate gambling. Sportsgummypodcast.com slash Patreon. All right, we're going to be back Sunday. Gumby's going to tell you all about that and say goodbye, though. All right, I'm David Gumby Freeland. He's Jeff Floofy Fox. And we will see you on Sunday.